how's it going everybody? Hope you're having a good day. Well, for those of you who are not in the US, today is election day, so the nerves are a little touched and people are just um, anxious and just, yeah, <laughs> some real fun stuff. And um, I also have my neuroscience exam tomorrow, which I am not ready for. And Pichi has been very playful. So I just wanted to get the updates out there. <laughs> um, but yeah, well, hopefully by end of the week, we'll have some um, more, I want to say good news, but I feel like there's, yeah, I'm just going to say we're going to have some stable news, um, hopefully by end of the week or so about the election. But I don't know enough about politics to speak very comfortably. All I, all I know is, well, I'm a chess player, I'm an immigrant, so <clears throat> yeah. So I just want to um, show you some good chess, let's enjoy some chess, let's look at some um, really dynamic stuff, and hopefully this will um, train our minds as well. Um, ooh. Yeah, so you are most likely going to hear a lot on the cat, he has been extremely just vocal. So <clears throat> the thing is here in St. Louis, we've had some really horrible weather recently, but today it got really good. So he wanted to go out, but I couldn't take him out because I had to study because of the neuroscience exam tomorrow. And yeah, so it hasn't really been his day, so to speak. All right, so um, I'm sure he'll forgive me with some liquid tuna. <laughs> Um, but okay, let's get to some chess. So, um, the first, wait, where is my bra? There is, there is my browser. I also have some Cheetos right before. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so the first game I wanted to show you is a game between Ryshevsky and Bronstein. I uh, probably am not pronouncing them as they should be, but that's how I learned them, and uh, yeah, this game was very uh, familiar, I don't know if you guys can see this part, but uh, because this happened in the Canada tournament, so Zurich 1953, so if you have not read that book yet, you should, like, get it now, get it today, that's one of the books that I always recommend to people reading, um, <clears throat> I would definitely recommend reading it with the commentary because there are some versions that they just have the games so make sure you find the one with the commentary i do not <clears throat> know for sure where you can find it but i'm sure these books these books are very popular it wasn't that hard for me to find it when i was back in iran years ago so this is a very famous um game and a very famous tournament so just be sure to um put it on your to-do list all right um so this game the opening was pretty normal, they don't really have much novelties to it. We just have a usual, <clears throat> I want to say usual King's Indian. Yeah, thank you, Peter. We should be able to find it on Amazon. And so I wanted to ask who here has encountered uh, this position or at least plays King's Indian with this setup? Whoa, you've never read anything on chess? Huh. <clears throat> well, to be fair, right, these days with YouTube and Twitch and all the other platforms, people uh, use a lot of the classic games and teach it by what I'm doing. So you don't necessarily have to have the book, but I would al always recommend having that, um, that self-thinking and just deciding for yourself and those stuff. So... Alright, great. So, um, nobody really plays this? Wow, I am a little shocked. I thought there would be at least, I want to say, five or six people.
so okay I see some nice comments are coming in all right great okay so yeah I mean this isn't that there's not something super specific about this um, like I feel like and like anybody can should be able to play any opening but in the lower levels people generally have a um, like a preference so I consider myself lower level compared to the super grandmasters obviously so for me like I have a like I prefer to play really active so if you give me a very dry position um, not so very strategic very dry that it doesn't I can't really come up with much uh, most likely than not either I'm gonna mess it up or even if I don't mess it up I'm just not going to be able to win it all I can do is hold it so that's why um, in lower levels it's a very good idea to actually know what you want to play and uh, just look around with games just see what what type of opening what type of chess feels right to you and yeah I think that's something that would help uh, you your specific uh, chess a lot. All right, so I'm glad I mentioned that. Okay, so um, oh, I see some. Uh, ah, Steve North, I remember you from Twitch channel, if I'm not mistaken. Um, all right, cool. What? what mm, oh, what exactly do I recommend? Why? Well, I'm not exactly recommending. The well, actually, I thought the analysis were by Nidor for the Zurich 1953 tournament. Um, but well, I recommend it because it was one of the great tournaments that I feel like it's it's one of those classics. The same way I feel like you should know the history of your country. Um, it's a good idea to know the history of chess, and a lot of the great players just played in it, so I think you should have an at least uh, basic foundation on it, and, but that's not the only reason, it, I think that, that was, there goes the cat with his explanation, <laughs> I think that was one of the first uh, tournaments that it's kind of like had that foundation of analysis to it, but um, yeah, uh, it's, it's really hard for me to explain, I just, I really liked reading it, hello, Grandmaster Fishy. Uh, all right. So, yeah, I think so too, Peter. I've I've heard different things about it as well. Okay. So, um, I I actually put I don't play this Kings in the M two often. I I played it occasionally when I was still hunting down worms. Um, but. Yeah, so this might C5 idea is actually pretty interesting. You're just kind of just going after this poor pawn. Uh, I've actually never played this A5 myself. There has been other lines that were tried, but A5 makes sense because, well, at some point this B4 is coming, and when you think about it a little bit different from like a different perspective, uh, this is kind of the Maroxi pawn structure. Well, with the Maroxi, like, there is usually the pawn of C5, that has been exchanged and then like the C pawn is usually like on E7 or and uh, so that's a little bit that that little slight difference um but like you still have those ideas this bishop is still holding this giant diagonal this bishop should still figure out where it exactly wants to go um so there's still similarities so it doesn't hurt you from understanding the Maroxi type of structures Okay, um, oh, thank you, Steve North. That's very nice to say. Um, what's who is the highest rated? Oh, that's a hard question. I, I mean, well, this wasn't rated, well, it was rated, but it wasn't a classic game. Uh, it was a rapid rated game. I played Fabiano, I held, I held it for a good, um, I got out of the opening correctly, I think. I didn't feel too miserable after the opening, and then time travel in the middle game, I just collapsed. But yeah, I think I don't think I've played anyone higher than him. Well, okay. Um, let's just think a little bit about this position. So one of the things to know is this idea of a rook b one. 
So as I mentioned, in the Marokti type of structures, white uh, generally wants to gain as much as the space. That's, that's not a secret. And this bishop over here is looking towards this rook, which kind of, and the pawn on a5 is kind of like paralyzing white's queen side. So if, in order for white to be able to um, somehow break through, white needs to deal with this issue, right? So I think one of the ways is to consider exchanging these bishops, but uh, at least right now that's either, um, eh, I wouldn't really recommend that. Because even in the real Maroxi type of pawn structures, you don't really want to do that. You know, uh, you usually take this knight if taken and then you go back. For those of you who are a little bit more theoretical. Um, so you don't exactly want to change it. The other reason is because this bishop would just look really weird if your other bishop is not on the board anymore. Your bishop is just um, looking towards these two central pawns that are the same color. And um, they don't really want to have bad bishops, right? So, rook b1 uh, is mm, kind of another idea that white could have gone with, and the idea is just simple. You want to uh, get this b, uh, b pawn moving, even though you will give up the a file, you are still kind of like mm, getting that space and just throwing around some, um, some uh, I was going to say some pawns, but I don't think that's the exact right. You shouldn't throw around pawns. Anyways, that's something that uh, it's worth considering, just uh, depending on how much you want this space. Ah, I see the green screen now. Huh. I usually don't watch myself on YouTube. I just read the chat, so I'm just I'm looking at it on here, and I see ah, this green screen is actually not very pleasant. Sorry about that. Oh, no, actually my cat doesn't, I don't think he wants to play chess. He wants to go outside and hunt stuff. He actually killed a bird, not by actually catching it, by scaring it to death. So that was a very um, weird thing that I kind of see. I, I tried to like give the bird a little like mini CPR with just like finger on the heart and all. And yeah, that, that poor guy was gone. I never thought my cat would scare anything like that. So, when, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. The, the cat is a, just, yeah, he, he does interrupt a lot. Um, he's also very cute and uh, it kind of like balances out. But, yeah, during exams especially and during the tournaments, yeah. Anyways, um, enough about the cat stories. So queen c2. So my question for you is black to move, what do you think black should do? You you know the ideas from both white and black side. Well, we both want space. We're both going to fight for space. We are both trying our best to, well, because the center is still pretty mobile. 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 Ah, well. Uh, the, <laughs> you can still do a lot to um, fight for it and poke around in it. So that's something to keep in mind. Oh, thank you. Yeah, those are very great ideas. Thank you, Arun and um, Elvio. Mm. Well, let's see. Oh, why did it stop? Hold on. Ah, bishop e6, interesting. Ah, oh, I agree, the knight on d4 is unprotected, but you can't, you don't really have like a tricky way to attack it, because if you take it, well, um, if you take this, can't I just simply, sorry, take back? And I don't think that's going to be very pleasant. The f6 square is going to be kind of painful. Um, uh, uh, yeah, your rook is also undefended. I don't really like this, guys. Yeah, this, the, uh, yeah, no. Nope. There, w there are way better ways to go about it. Hmm. So, I don't think we should move this knight right now. I either would like to develop, so I either want to, like, um, do something with this bishop, or I kind of want to continue fighting for um, 
space. So those are kind of my two choices. Hello, Kate. What do you want to teach? Honestly, let's give it another try, guys. Um, ooh. I, so, yes, C6 is a pretty cool move, but what is your idea? I think C6 is a great idea. Uh, another move that I was thinking that you guys could potentially offer was A4. I thought these two moves would be, um, Bishop E7. I feel like bishop d7 is just too chill. Bishop comes to e3, rook comes to d1. I don't really know what, like, what do you want to do with this bishop? Yeah. Um, so I'm not super familiar with these type of positions either. I kind of play this as white, so I have a general idea of what white wants to do. Um, but not necessarily what black should do, honestly. But one thing that I learned playing, ooh, we want head drops. Uh, playing like different openings is just no, no, no please don't click on the mouse. <laughs> uh, it's just the ideas with c6 and b5, those kind of really shine in a lot of the games. Let me let me remove the, the furry fur ball. Ugh. Yeah, it's getting a big boy. Okay, um, ooh, uh, bishop of five. Interesting, but I still might taste. I mean, then you'll take it back with the pawn, and uh, yeah, your pawn structure gets weird. But good, good idea with the tricky uh, pin. I think that was interesting. All right, so c6 is actually the best move. Um, the thing with c6 is that now if you continue with bishop e3, now I'm gonna bring the knight back. So the idea with c6 is not just to um, well, attack for d5 or b5 is more controlling these squares, and you kind of are considering them, well, not right now, obviously, but you kind of just want to give yourself that option to have it, like, up your sleeve, and you can just whip it out whenever you want. Um, but I really like this idea with knight d7. Knight d7 is a very great idea. You are opening your bishop. You might want to relocate the knight and go poke around there. So I think this is a very cool idea. Um, so white plays rook d1, simple moves. Uh, I was thinking maybe b3 would be a little more prophylactic, but rook d1 and a4, because, well, the knight is on c5 defending, um, the pawn, we're just gaining space, and you guys are going to see how important it is to continue pushing this pawn, so that's something to keep in mind. Yeah, I see the cat is gaining a lot of popularity among you guys. Yeah, that's great actually. Um, maybe we could do that. That's, I mean, a possibility depending on what the position requires. But I feel like my e5 is more realistic just going around for that. But again, we're going to see, it really depends on what the opponent does. For example, best move right now. Anybody wants to take a shot at it and tell me what's the best, what would be the best move for white? <laughs> I agree, c6 does look a little um, just weird, like not the first move you could think about. So, ah, what if f4? Hmm. Um, 
so the thing about F4 is F4 is actually doable, but when you play F4, you're very committed to just playing in the king side and center, and you're kind of giving up on your queen side. So either, thank you, thank you. Um, I see a, the right move in the chat. A D4 is the right move. So uh, either you are going to fight for um, both king and queen side, which is what you ideally want to do with a move like b4, and after b4 we'll take, take, queen a5, you know, taking over space, and now why, black has to figure out how to get this guy out. Um, so the best suggestion was to stop b4, and get the other knight out, and then you're gonna slowly try and figure out what to do with this bishop, you know, it's not that easy for um, black to be able to do that. And, um, apparently, if I'm not mistaken, this game was played, um, in Olympia 1982. So the correct move of B4 was played, um, about 30-ish years, almost 30 years after this game, the game between, uh, Ryszewski and Bronstein. So, however, Ryszewski did not play this B4 in the game, and he simply played Knight E2. So now, you saw how white can um, get, well, how white should have gone about it and how white should have fought for the queen side. But now with knight e2, what do you think black can do? How do you think black can use this, this, um, this mistake? Ha, huh, why am I wearing a tiara? I got that question before, too. this is not a tiara, this is just a headband. Uh, a plastic one as well. It's like, yeah. So I don't know why you guys want to see me in a tiara, but yeah. <laughs> I'm good, I'm good, thank you, Yaroslav. Yeah, it's been going kind of weird. I procrastinated on doing a, the studying for an exam that I have tomorrow, so I am pretty roasted, toasted, all of the, just, yeah. I have to watch about five hours of lecture and read the study guide that, if I'm not mistaken, is about 45 pages. Yeah. Um. Alright. I don't really see the right move, honestly, in the chat just yet. And, oh, this is actually kind of cute. Tracy is asking if the chat is behaving. Yeah, chat is behaving. I probably shouldn't be reading these out loud, but Tracy is saying good stuff, right? Yeah, the chat is usually behaving. Sometimes towards the end, some somebody shows up from somewhere and gets funny, but... Ah. Let's see. No? Okay. So, oh, thank you, Ariane. I think you were the first one who said the correct move with Queen A5. So Queen A5 is very interesting because, I, I get it, Queen A5 looks weird because you're technically dropping your D6 pawn, but the thing is with Queen A5, remember in the other line, even when white played the best moves, we still did this Queen A5. That is another idea of a c6 to free the queen, right? We wanted to free this queen. Uh, and for those of you who play this line with white or have more experience in this pawn structure in Maroxi or uh, the, sorry, Maroxi pawn structure, you kind of know that this idea with queen a5 is pretty famous. The only thing is that in Sicilian, there is no pawn on the c7 anymore, so this pawn is already moved. Yes, Mr. Pichy. And um, so white goes there, we go up there. Now, what do you guys think about rook takes d6? Do you think that's a good idea for white or should white shouldn't do that? Oh, so while you guys are thinking about the best move for black, I'm gonna ramble and complain about this stray cat. So this, uh, there's a stray cat that comes behind the door every single night, pretty much as soon as the sun is going down, 
And, well, of course I feed him Preachy's leftovers and my leftovers and all. But the problem is that I put the food, like, a few meters away. So he eats it, he chills, he goes. But, um, unfortunately, uh, this guy, um, uh, really wants to play with my cat so he always comes behind the door and just gets pushy all um, riled up and all and it's not as fun as it sounds it's cute for like a few minutes and then oops. and I actually had a baby fight yesterday I opened the door to see if the other cat wants to come in and pushy sprinted out and they kind of hissed at each other for a little bit it was interesting pushy rarely hisses. So, that is my crazy cat story. Now, let's see. Um, ah, well, thank you for watching all the way from Germany. This game, I mean, I'm sure this game was very famous, so either you've seen it before, or you're gonna see it later, or you could simply just, well, watch the rest of it later. So, thank you for watching. Good to know that there are a lot of cat fans here. So yeah, this is some bromance going on. Actually, I don't know if that cat is a female or a male, but my cat is a male. Okay, so the thing is, uh, I, I I see that there are some confusions about uh, this Rook D6. Well, Rook D6 is definitely worth considering, but the problem is Knight E5. And now the C4 is pretty, um, what's the right word? I was going to say poke. That's, that's, yeah, that's what I'm going to choose. The C4 pawn is pretty poked. And uh, white can only play something like C3, sorry, B3 to defend it. And then we're going to take, and then we're going to simply do a little mini baby tactic of taking over there. And then knight f3, and the, the rook on e1 falls. And when that falls, the queen on a5, just the king on e1, it's just basically just going to be like Christmas. So, yeah, this is not very pleasant for white, obviously. Alright, ooh, from Indonesia, nice. <laughs> Alright, so that is why actually rook d6 does not work, because, well, white has way too many holes in his position for rook d6 to actually work, so white has to be very careful, and that is another reason why his idea of a b4 or b3 was a good idea to just try and somewhat cover a lot of those holes. Alright, so well, white played bishop f1, knight e5, logically, right? You can see this little one poke over there. And so now white, uh, sorry, black to move, what do you think uh, Bronstein should do? Oh, I see some... Ha! Huh. Um, well, exquisite uh, cats are not romantic. I, I don't think they're they're having like a romantic thing going on. It's more like just playful. But yeah, I, I don't really want to have another cat as long as um, Pishi is around. Maybe when Pishi is old, I'll get a baby cat for Pishi to train how to be a cat. I don't have a problem with fostering, but I just. It, I can't imagine actually liking another cat as much as I like Pishi, so that I think, yeah, I feel like it won't be fair to the other cat. Yeah. But, also Pishi might just, you know, flat out kill the other cat, so that's always something to consider. <laughs> Ah, so there is still a vote for bishop e6. Alright, so I still haven't seen... Ah, well, um, CMF, the pawn on is already on a4. Do you mean a3? And keep in mind that because we have so much more space in the queen side, it's not, not necessarily a bad idea to just gain more space. Yeah, so I kind of like this A3 idea, and well, so did Bronstein, uh, spoiler alert. But yeah, A3 was a pretty cool idea, um, this is kind of a, this is something that I've seen in a lot of games happen, like 
you don't necessarily you you might not necessarily be able to calculate why this is a good idea but just getting that space to call on like a3 or like h3 just like those are kind of a um it's just one of those things that the more you play chess you kind of get a feeling for it i think I'm, i hope i'm uh, uh, explaining it good um oh for example if any of you uh, watched the games that i did in u.s championship or any videos that i did about the games that i played in u.s championship um you guys would know that the game the first game that i had against sabina that was pretty much it i i, I couldn't calculate the why i mean what i mean how the g5 would pan out, why, where, when, how, all of those fun stuff, but I just knew that in that game that I'm talking about, the first round of US Championship, I knew that G5 was the only chance to gain some space, get some creativity, I and mean, stuff like that. So I feel like it's the same with A3, you can't exactly calculate every single move, um, you have to just calculate that, okay, you're not wondering, so I think that's the, the bare minimum that you should do. What about knight e6? I think knight e6, um, sorry, knight e6 could be interesting, but I kind of like my knight here. I don't really feel the need, I mean knight e6, okay, knight e6, if you don't play a3, then knight e6 should be the move you do. I like it, yeah. Um, because, uh, white's kind of stuck if you try to play, ooh, not there, something like king g2 to stop the knight f3, then I could just take it and play bishop e6. I, I could live with this. Yeah, I think this is pretty cool. This is pretty doable. Uh, but a3, the thing with a3 is that it's kind of just... Mm, it's really mm, destabilizes... Ah, I said the word. Uh, the queen side. So when you go ahead and play something like b3, now there's even knight f3. You take that, and then c3 is falling, and this pawn is already too far, and uh, let's just, just imagine we get to this position. Now, actually, knight takes b3 is a serious threat. So, I don't think this is something, it's just one of those moves that you're also kind of like throwing the ball in your opponent's court, because if you play knight e6, king g2 is the only move. So, white will most likely find it, it's the only move, it's not that hard. But when you play a3, now I have to decide, hmm, do I want b3 or do I want to do something in the king side? So I kind of like that, that idea about just forcing the opponent to make the decision between eh, a little bad and like a little worse than that. <clears throat> Go bit. Alright, so we have a very meowing cat. Yeah, he, the, the, the stray cat is behind the window, so Pishi is very anxious because I did not have time to take him outside today. Oh boy. Alright, so um, why play is this f4? Now, quick, quick question, this won't be too hard, but what do you think we should do as black? Oh boy, no, blue cat is not hungry. He has been fed, cuddled, brushed, loved, treat, I gave him treats drank, slept, everything. He just wants to go out and play. <laughs> cat that agrees with A3. Yeah, the cat agrees with active going out and stuff. Yeah, if he continues meowing, I'm gonna have to force love him and bring him over and just hold him right here. Huh. Yeah, so what do you think Black should do? Do you see any, um, any like, uh, kinky stuff or do you just want to bring this knight back? I don't really see any tactics, honestly. I mean, you could consider... Uh, no, just taking here is also not very... Take, take... What would I do next? Okay, I gotta take this with the bishop. Then what am I doing? Eating g3? Yeah, I mean, it's possible, but... Uh, no, I wanna meow. I, I don't, nah, it's not necessary. I could just simply bring the knight back. The thing is, white is like unnecessarily making his position more susceptible to poking and just getting uh, more unstable. So next you could just try to, you know, do a cool maneuver there. The other thing is, um, the, oh, ow. the other thing to consider
consider is that um, black is actually playing way more in the queen side and a little bit in center. So it's a good idea to bring more pieces to that side, right? Compared to if you wanted to keep your pieces in the king side and form something like that. Because, well, let's face it, when you're going to poke white in the queen side, black's white's going to poke you back in the king side. Well, you do queen side, he's going to do king side. So you might as well just prepare it and don't give too much opportunities to your opponent. Um, unless you are one of those people who loves calculating, uh, then in that case, yeah, you can do some crazy stuff and just calculate, your, calculate until your brain hurts. I avoid uh, too much calculation because I'm generally a tired, sleep-deprived person as a student, pre-med, studying for MCAT, so just, so I, I don't want to spend too much time calculating. <laughs> um, so if you have too much time on your hand and you want to calculate, go ahead and go for it. But if you feel a little more practical or slash lazy or whatever you want to call it, yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't give up this line. It could. It could turn into a beautiful sacrifice. It could into. It could turn into a disaster. So to me, knight d7 is definitely the move. All right. Um. So knight comes back. B3 and just knight a6. You see, some poking material. There we go. This other knight is coming up there too. All right. Let's go up there. I don't guess for b3. Hello, kitty. Mm, why? What's the purpose of move e3? Huh. I thought something like g4 should be the way to go. Like you push g4, and you're gonna try and just form some sort of an attack. Otherwise, you will. White is kind of just busted. Um. So. Yeah. Rook e3. Now. Whoa. Well. Kitty. I need you to sit down. Oh, it is hard to be a calf parent, let alone an actual parent. Can't imagine. So, uh, to all the parents out there, you, everybody, you guys deserve like a, a real treat. Like a night off, ice cream, wine, whatever. This is, yeah, parenting is hard. Let alone for a little calf. I mean, just for a little calf, let alone for a real baby human. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> um, so rook e3, black to move, what do you think you should do? The first thing I really want to do is knight b4, ah, thank you, yeah, so knight b4, let's just go for it. The knight belongs on b4, it's not like I'm actually going to bring this knight to c7 again, so let's just go up. Now, black to move, this is actually a kind of an interesting position, just because it's not too complicated, but you have to actually know how to, um, how to manage it, so you gotta show some skills. So black to move, what do you wanna do? Oh boy. Oh no, no, please don't drop stuff. Come on, kitty. Now he's in the rebellious stage. He's dropping stuff from the table. Oh, um, exquisite? Yeah, no, thank you, no. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, if slash when I have a kid, I want my mom here. My mom is raising that kid. I want to go to work, man. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, the kid can give me a call when he's 18. No, I'm kidding. I, I like children. But no, raising children is just, yeah. It, yeah, it needs a help. It takes a village. I'm glad that in the U.S. the concepts of working mom and just like daycare and all is such a um, acceptable thing because in Iran it's not like they would criticize you if you go to work and leave your kid behind at home as a woman they would criticize you if you don't so there's not really like the nannies are not a real thing I think it's kind of interesting how in the US that you can't really leave the kids alone before a certain age I think the age is like 13 please correct me I don't know the exact age but yeah, I think that's that's also very interesting that you would actually have to have it um, another like the teenager watch over the kids. I think that's a yeah. I think that's actually I really like that's one of the things I really do like about US. Okay, so back to chess. Let's stop talking about babies and babysitting and yeah, I ain't gonna have a baby for any, for 
foreseeable future. Um, so, black, will black count for play? Well, okay, so I I get your idea that I saw a lot of gorgeous ideas with F5. Thank you for sharing. I do think that F5 is definitely interesting. My problem with F5 is that it's not tricky enough. If you play F5, white has a lot of options, including something like G4. Including something like simply bishop to G2. And I don't exactly like that about it. So that is why I would not play f5 in my real game. I kind of, I kind of, kind of, I want to play bishop d7. Normal, simple moves. And I want to see you. I want to see you as white make the good moves. If you make the good moves, if you can hold your position and show off all of your skills, then sure you deserve uh, the point, uh, whatever you point get. Uh, I mean, like half a point or the full point. But. Um, more often than not, opponents tend to not necessarily um, necessarily just find all those right rules, unless it's like a very easy position. Like so, um, yeah, we can definitely look at um, Bishop D four line. Ooh, Bishop D four line. I actually did not think about this. And Knight B three. Huh. I guess your idea was with A two. Well, I'm definitely going to take that. Queen takes a2. Hmm. This looks very interesting, but my problem is rook takes d6 at the end. And I don't really know what to do about that. Am I missing something? Because I feel like if the d6 pawn was a staying, it would still be playable for, one, for black. But I don't really like this, honestly. I don't want to enter wars endgame. I have so much more activity here compared to that end game. Alright. Well, I'm glad this clarified things up. Oh, the cat's gonna drop stuff. Alright. Um where were we? What about rook b eight? Ah uh, not really sure about rook b eight. At least not yet. Oh my god, you guys can see this, but I'm like Holding a fight with PG over here over my flash drive. <laughs> All right, from from next time, you kitty are gonna be locked in a cute little room when I have to teach. All right. Ah, cats. Um, sorry for the cat little commercials. Okay. Um, I was talking about f5 and then I was mentioning bishop d7 and you had a question about bishop d4, I hope those are solved. Alright, again, if you want to play f5, f5 is perfectly fine, you can't do it. Just my problem with it is it's too simple and it kind of forces opponent's hand into going for g4. <laughs> Next move, Dorsa takes cat. No, he's way too cute to be taken. Ah, I could force hug him. Hmm. Um, so... I, I kind of like bishop d7 because bishop d7 is a simple move. I might want to do b5. I might just want to wait and see what you do. Do you want to do e5? Do you want to do f5? Do you want to do g4? Honestly, as white, I think I would go for either bishop c2 or g4 because I don't think that this, this center is ready to be pushed just yet. But even if, uh, even a very strong player such as Ryshevsky made the mistake of playing e5. So you can understand why I've learned my lesson on not rushing into things. So rushing into f5, f5 feels like a very big commitment. Like you meet someone on a Monday and you do a sh Vegas wedding by Thursday. f5 feels like that. <laughs> I don't know why I use that expression. Um, but at the same time, like bishop d7 is just a little bit more chill, just slow. You're going to let the opponent make the mistakes. You're going to show them all of those fun stuff. I have not graduated from college. It is my last-ish year. There's a lot of, there are a lot of classes I want to take and uh, yeah, we'll see. Okay, so everything other, yeah, exactly. Thank you, Yaroslav. That sounds actually pretty correct. Everything other than Bishop D7 does seem like an overpush. Uh, yeah. So, now white plays e5. So, as black, we don't really have much of a choice. We're going to take that, right? And you can see that white's 
attack is already kind of not as um, promising anymore compared to something with g4 or potentially something like that. I want to bring the bishop out there. So e5, take, take. Um, I think the main thing that you should worry about right now is your bishop on d7 and the fact that this rook is uh, in front of it. So just thinking logically about it, most of your pieces are in a very reasonable position. Honestly, I wish my bishop was a little, this bishop was a little bit more activated, but right now, well, we can't really do much about it. We could just bring rook d8, and I do like that idea. Rook d8, you're simply uh, defending it, and the rook is not really doing that much on a8 anymore. So that's kind of why we bring it back. Well, we don't actually bring it back, we never moved it. We finally developed it. Uh, you could consider other options such as queen c7, nothing wrong with that. Computer actually suggests h5, which I didn't really think about before I saw that, so... I don't think that's it, Axel. I think that uh, it was more like he couldn't... It's not that he couldn't calculate. Uh, it was more like black has a better stable position. So white has to use something dynamic to um, get it done, otherwise white is not going to have a very pleasant game. So I think that was the mistake that he rushed it, and a lot of players rush moves. You can see today's top level, well, I don't think there was anything top for today, but these days top chess and see how uh, people rush into moves anyways. Am I from Russia? Ha! Huh. No, that is actually funny. I have my grand, my great grandma had some mixed blood and stuff, but no. Um. Okay, so e5, take take with d8, and white plus g4. Now, in the spirit of rearranging pieces, what is the next piece you want to rearrange? Well, uh, Axel, it's not that the attack stops. White still does have some potential with these squares, right? If the knight could get over here or over there, or this bishop could, uh, could get activated, that could still be pretty, um, pretty promising for white. Um, Dominic, my name uh, would go uh, somewhat like Dorsa Derakshani, and yeah, I am. I am from Iran. Uh, Abdullah. Huh. Well, Garlic, thank you for the wish, but can you modify it a little instead of GM? Wish me like an MD if you're praying for me. I, I want the MD first, you know. Working towards that is really hard right now. Well, not as hard as it should be, but still. Alright. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I agree. ID6. Gorgeous, yeah, 96, you're blocking the pawns, you're attacking this knight, and a lot of the chess is about understanding when to back off. So right now, you gotta back off. This knight's job is somewhat, um, kind of done. So, you gotta back off. This knight's done over here. Bishop h4, and you're finally gonna take over there. Well, keep in mind, if bishop, if bishop takes d8, knight takes e2, and that's the check. Um, rook takes d4, and so now, black to move, how can we play tricky? This game is continuing for a while, so I'm gonna probably rush into some of the moves, but this one I really would like it if you guys could um, tell me what you think black should do. Shouldn't be that hard of a move since black does not have that much luxury to, you know, move around too much. What is MD? MD is uh, the title that doctors get, or DO. DO is also another title that doctors in the US get. MD is a little bit towards what I more towards what I want because I want to um, become a surgeon. So DO, the surgery gets a little even more competitive. Do I hold the chat regularly? Huh, I hope so. Alright, yeah, huh. 
good to know. Ah, oh, the campus is still holding the show. Cool. I guess I gotta talk to the club for a, a deployment for PC as well. Yeah, Tracy, can you, can you get right on it, please? And PC, I'll be his manager. I'll take ten percent. Uh, all right. So, um, yeah. All right, yeah, you gotta play queen c5. That's the, that's the trickiest you can be, at least in this position, especially because, well, I mean, you don't really have much of an option. Your rook is under attack, you move this rook, your bishop drops, so, I mean, you gotta just go for queen c5. Um, rook e4, and now another tricky move, bishop h6. You're simply poking around and making the most of your position. So I, um, this was actually a hard move for me to find, but I'm going to give you guys uh, about 30 seconds to see, to get some ideas. So feel free to, um, let me know what you think you should do, but keep in mind, I'm only giving 30 seconds. Whoa, we should be five or four and six. No, well, hold on, actually, just black to move. Bishop, f6. Ah, thank you, Washington from Poland. I, I played in Poland uh, once, and I had so many Polish friends. So, glad to know. No, this was, oh, wow, Aryan, you're strong. Yeah, this one was hard for me to find when I looked at it first, so it took me a good couple of minutes before I gracefully gave up. Um, yeah, bishop e6 is actually the best move to go. The thing is, if you were to take the rook, I'll take back, and rook d2 is coming. So that's why this move is so strong. Not because of, well, sacrificing, it's because you're opening up your, um, you're opening up your, um, pieces to, well, a lot of activity and dynamic chess. And that's kind of the thing here. We're looking at a lot of dynamic chess. In the game, um, Krzyzewski played g5, and honestly, from now on, black position is just very great. Well, you, the knight is supposed to be here, but the knight is there, being pretty useless. You open the room for knight. We have bishop f5. Ah, we got rid of that useless bishop that we had. And now again, regrouping. You could come over to e6, you could just move the queen and go to c5, so you're just simply um, the, um, re regrouping and reorganizing your pieces, which is actually pretty great. So in the game, why play e6? Because honestly, if this knight got to e6, this is a very um, unpleasant position for white. You play, white is playing pretty paralyzed. What is wrong with pawn f4? Then after capturing, you take a bishop. Um, Dominic, I don't know which position you're referring to because there, uh, pawn f4, is, I haven't been able to make f4 move in the last few minutes. So if you actually, if you could tell me in which position, I would definitely go back and take a look at it. Ah, Z is saying knight b4. Well, uh, the knight was on b4, we just came back. And we're kind of facing with e6 right now. We're trying to regroup the pieces. You got to take that. And now, the, the, uh, I think one of the last questions that I will ask you for tonight is, are you going to take this, or are you going to play rook f8? Ah, instead of bishop e6? Hmm. Um, Rook f8 is actually best. I'm going to take a second to just see what about this 
Well, I guess you're talking, you're mentioning F5, Dominic. I don't really, um, mm, yeah, I mean, F5 could be, but the problem is F5 is just the pawn takes. If you take over there, there's F7. I don't like giving too much activity, but yes, if you can't find the bishop e6, doing something like f5 or bishop e3 in this position is the best choice. But alright, let's just get to the position that we were at. Rook f8, yeah. So, rook f8 is actually the best move, and the thing with rook f8 is that this bishop is a monster. You're coming up with bishop d4, you're gonna bring the knight. Oh. And so, why try to drift e7? But even then, we have this bishop d4. Rook's got to move, and now again, just queen f5. Attack, simple moves. Now you can actually see. So, according to the engine, this move is actually, like right now, the position is still pretty 0 0. But you can feel how much uh, it is like, better to be black. Black is the one with pretty much all of the threats and with the better pieces so yeah i think that's another thing to keep in mind when it comes to dynamic chess and activity all right so queen of five in the game brzezewski went rook e8 Ooh. and um following what we've been doing with bishop d4 queen of five our lovely one move threats we're going to continue that one move threats are awesome Honestly, as long as you're improving your position and getting your dynamic chess on, why not? One move threats are perfect. Alright, so again in this position, this is uh, another thing to really just try and whoa, ho, get the cat out of the camera, is um, how much this position is so um, weak for white. Like, the pawn on g5 is falling, uh, this pawn on a3 is completely dominating the queen side. So, so you can simply take it over there. You have queen e6, you have queen g3. And now, my most favorite move of all time, mate in ones. It's the, the easiest to calculate, right? So, in the game, white tried to throw in some chess and defend the mate, and... Well, you can easily see how uh, this, just comparing these two bishops together makes me laugh a little. Haha. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, but the fact that black is also a pawn up in the king side, and this pawn is on a3 on the queen side. Yeah. Those are some real fun stuff. Um, I don't really get king g2. It's just simple check, and... Ah, this is such a lovely endgame. Okay, so, um, ah, I should have timed my class a little bit better. I really wanted to get deeper into endgame. I don't know why a simple 65 move game takes so much time, but yeah, I kind of like to read the chat and answer. Alright, I'll try to uh, power through before Doro has to start his endgame, but okay. So, um, we can all agree that exactly black is better thank you yeah i think uh, that's what i was just gonna say we can all agree that black is better it's just a matter of how you're gonna win this well first of all don't blunder second of all i will blend the cat no no question there <laughs> third of all uh you have to keep your activity so you, sh you mean obviously you shouldn't exchange the squeeze right away um but you could simply poke around with the queen a little, get the king back there, bring your own... So imagine if your king is already somewhere there when you exchange the queen, then yeah, you can simply eat that. So that's kind of the idea. Yeah, exactly. So, um... Let's go for that. Get space, kick the king, get more space, and finally bring the king. This is what we've been waiting for. Again, you could potentially start trying to exchange queens and get the king to b2, but um, ideally, whoa, ideally, um, we kind of want to keep the activity. We want to see if we could get anything out of the game when the queens are here. So, I don't get this idea, but 
but I like the threat of mating one. Ha, ah, that's funny. If king goes to g2, queen h2 mate. Anyways, um, alright, so the idea is simple. The black is kind of just prolonging the inevitable that you, as black, want to exchange these queens while you get the king up there, and white made this weird mistake of d4. I, I don't get it. And yeah, this is just actually Zugzuang. Ha. So, yeah. Um, the design theme is actually very interesting. So there's there's not just a one way to win it. There are a lot of different ways to win it. One of it was this. You just kind of um, Zugzuang your opponent. Uh, one of it, the easiest way that I could think of was simply getting the king to a5 on the right time and um, exchanging the queen and getting the king to b2 and eating the pawn. Uh, well, I'll do, I like to see where why misplayed the two, but I think white kind of started to get weird all the way back when white chose to play e5. Around here, white rushed into it, uh, prematurely played this e5 instead of g4, and black has shown very great technique into winning this game. So yeah, I'm sorry that we had to rush into some of the last moves, but um, feel free to just check that endgame on your own. This is a very lovely endgame, or, well, if Garo has time, you could poke him about it and ask him to show you more about it. <laughs> um, and well, if not, I will see you guys on Friday on Twitch for some endgame. I will talk more about this endgame, uh, the first position that we will do on Twitch on Friday from 5 to 7. So be sure to show up and we'll, we'll have some fun with the cat. And yeah. Alright, well this was actually very great. Thank you everybody from all around the world that you stayed and you watched me. I'm gonna go study for my tomorrow exam and I um, also kinda wanna watch how the election is going. But alright, so. Uh, have a great rest of your day slash night, and I'll see you all on Friday.